Hey guys, Middle Jesus here. Now I've had a lot of people ask me what my opinion is of Google Stadia because as you guys know, I'm a big fan of collecting physical media, physical games. That's what my uh, my game collection and my channel is all about. And so to, to research this, I was like, well, maybe I should get it just so I can talk about it on my channel. And to my surprise, I couldn't really use it even if I wanted to. And I think a lot of you are gonna be in the same boat as me. And so I thought I would do this video to kind of talk about it because it's gonna be a bit of a problem for a lot of us. But before we get into that, let's talk about what Google Stadia is if you're not familiar with it. So Google Stadia is a online cloud-based gaming service that Google is gonna launch, I believe next year. And right now you can, you can join in on it and I think you can get access to the beta or something like that. So get early access and maybe get a, a fancy controller to go with it. But, but the idea here being is that you don't have to have a PC, you know, like a high-end gaming machine. You don't have to have the latest gaming console. Essentially, if you have a device that can run the Chrome browser, then you can use Google's servers in the cloud to basically do all the processing of games and then send it down to your browser. And in theory, actually, it's kind of an interesting concept. I mean, it's not a new concept. Uh, other services have done this, but Essentially what they're trying to do is basically make it so you don't have to spend thousands of dollars on hardware, just use whatever you've got. And it has some really interesting features like the ability to, you could start playing a game on your TV and then walk over to your phone and then continue right where you left off, go over to your iPad, go over to you know your laptop, any device that basically can run Chrome. It also has some really interesting features where uh, it's gonna have streaming built into it, which I think a lot of people would probably, uh, probably use. But that's it in a nutshell, essentially that it's designed to all, you know, offload all of the hardcore processing onto Google servers, and then it would just send it to every device that runs Chrome that you have. Now, the thing I was surprised to learn, and maybe I should have known this all along, but it just didn't register, I didn't really think about it too, too deeply at the time, was all of that high-end gaming data is gonna be coming down from Google and essentially just suck up all of your bandwidth that you have available in your house, either to your, your computer or your cell phone. I was really shocked about this. So I was doing some research and I landed on a site, uh, businessinsider.com, and they kind of broke it down. And basically what they were saying is that if you stream a game at 4K, uh, you know, with everything kind of turned on, it's essentially going to use about 16 gigabytes, about 15.75, I think is what they said, per hour. Now, that may not sound like a lot, but trust me, it is, because I immediately went to my internet provider in my house, and I was like, well, how much bandwidth am I using? I act, honestly, I don't really track this. Um, so I logged into the back end of their of their site and I was looking at my bandwidth and you are seeing it on the screen here. And I was shocked to learn that there are some months where I'm basically pushing, you know, over 700 gigabytes of data in a plan that basically has one terabyte maximum. And just so you guys know, I don't have any other services other than internet. So I don't have I, I don't have any television services. You know, I don't have basic cable or anything like that. It's just internet. And this usage you're seeing right here is actually, it's just Netflix, Hulu, uh, probably YouTube, and maybe a little bit of HBO or something like that. I never play multiplayer games because I just don't have time to do it. So this, what you're seeing right here is just kind of my basic internet usage in my home, plus, you know, the streaming services that we watch. But I was looking at that going, well, that doesn't leave very much for uh, Google Stadia. I mean, I did the math and so, you know, some of these months I had basically like 270 gigabytes left over. Well, if you divide that by 16, it only leaves about 17 or 18 hours per month to use their service. So that means essentially that every other day I could use Google Stadia for one hour. <laughs> I wouldn't even be able to use it every day, right? It, it'd be like an hour every once in a while is all I could fit into this. And by the way, if you look down on the bottom of the screen there, it says that I'm only allowed to go over that maximum twice. 
and then they'll start basically penalizing me, which I was like, oh man, it's like, it's crazy. And also too guys, I live in Seattle. So we are a tech city. And by the way, I actually don't even, this is not even basic internet. I actually pay a little bit per month to double the speed of my internet because I do a lot of YouTube, both uploads and downloads. Um, so yeah, it's like, <laughs> I mean, I guess I could pay for more bandwidth, but why would I do that? I mean, it's just ridiculous. I also got to thinking about my cell phone plan. And again, one of the main benefits of Stadia is that you can be at home, you can be playing your game, and then you can be at the doctor's office and you can hop on your phone and potentially pick up right where you left off, which is cool in theory. But there are many months when I actually hit the maximum data plan of my cell phone. Uh, my wife and I share it. And especially if we go out of town, or if we go traveling anywhere, you know, where we're using our cell phone a lot and we're not necessarily on local Wi-Fi, you know, we, we, we get really close. If not, sometimes we actually have to pay a little bit more. So again, it's like I wouldn't be able to use this because it's gonna be using so much bandwidth all the time. Now, I know some of you are saying, you know, give it a rest. It's like online only, digital only is the future. It's inevitable, it's coming. And yeah, I, I agree. It's definitely, you know, very popular on PC. Obviously, a lot of people love Steam and have been using it successfully for years. However, I would remind you though, that, you know, online digital only is very different than streaming, right? So you're not actually going to be running that game on your computer with Stadia, it's gonna be on Google's server. And with Steam, you do download that. And another thing is that people kind of forget is that you can actually back up your Steam games uh, right through the menu, it's an option there. So you technically could, I don't think very many people remember to do this or do it that often, but uh, you can actually go and you can actually back up your games to your hard drive, you can burn a DVD, you can put them on an SD card and you know put them in a drawer and essentially archive them. And again, with streaming, you're not gonna really have that. And here's another thing too that kind of worries me about all that is that I don't know if I really trust Google to be in it for the long game here because Google does have a history of starting projects, trying them out, and then kind of shutting them down, you know? And that's, that's no slam against them. It's just that for whatever reason, they didn't work out and you know, they took them away. I mean, people remember Google Base, Google Plus, uh, Picasa was, a, was an app that they used to have and probably rolled it into something else. But you know, they've got a history of launching things, seeing if it works, and then if it doesn't, they kill it off. And it wouldn't surprise me if this doesn't work out, those games that you buy to run in the cloud may be gone forever. And speaking of gone forever, we just recently went through this with DuckTales Remastered. So that is a remake of a classic NES game that a lot of people love. It came out digitally on the PlayStation 3, the Xbox uh, 360, and probably some other stuff, but essentially it got delisted recently. And so a lot of people were scrambling for the few physical copies that were able to be found in the wild. And if you've been on social media lately, you've seen that a lot of people have been, you know, showing that, yes, I found a copy of this. And, you know, because again, people were scrambling, they liked the game, they wanted a physical version of it. And I, I think about that a lot because there was an OutRun game. I'm trying to remember if it came out on the original Xbox or the Xbox 360 that got delisted as well. I think they lost the license to Ferrari and so they can no longer sell the digital version. So people are scrambling to get the physical. Uh, I always think of one of my all time favorite Xbox 360 games and that is Hydro Thunder Hurricane, which is a fantastic arcade racing game that came out on the Xbox 360 that never got a physical release here in the US. I maybe got one overseas, I don't know. Uh, it should have because it's such a great game. Now, thankfully, Microsoft has made that backwards compatible with the Xbox One, so you can download and play it there, which is great. But who knows how long it's gonna be there? I mean, it's one of my favorite games on that system. And yes, I can have it archived forever on one of my systems, but heaven forbid if the hard drive failed, I'd be screwed. So, you know, I'm just not, I'm just not there yet for the full digital streaming future, you know what I'm saying? And then finally, we need to talk about lag. 
Now you probably noticed over the last year or so, a bunch of YouTubers like myself have been reviewing these clone consoles that have come out recently. And some of them are FPGA based, which have very little lag. Uh, some of them are emulator based, which can introduce some lag. Plus you have wireless controllers, which have their own lag. Uh, you have video upscalers, which have lag. You have your HD television in its normal mode, which can introduce lag. And now you have uh, Google Stadia streaming over the internet, which inherently would also have lag. And I just think that it's gonna be too much. You know, I just think that there's so much discussion around all of those clone systems and how people hate lag that just adding that in there, you're gonna have it no matter what. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna, it's gonna depend on how far away from the, the servers you are and, and how good the routers and the switches are in your neighborhood and things like that. There's just too many variables there that I think that for most people it's, well, I don't know, it, it's hard to say. I mean, lag is something that, that some people are, are sensitive to and others are not. Um, generally slower games, most people don't notice it as much, but then if you get into like, you know, the NES style platformers that are pixel perfect and yeah, lag can definitely ruin your day. And so it's going to be interesting to see. I, again, I'm very skeptical. Uh, I, I did see the, the Stadia running at E3 and it looked pretty good, but that was also because Google had their own routers and switches sitting right next to the, the, the bank of computers. Um, so it was kind of like the perfect scenario. So I think in your home, it's going to be a much different situation. So anyways, guys, that's my thoughts on Google Stadia as of right now. I'm very skeptical about the whole situation as I'm sure many of you are. Um, you know, it's one of those scenarios where I feel like just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. It, it's going to be a proof of concept, I think, to kind of see, you know, it, it, is the market right for it? Do people want it? Are they willing to pay for it? Are they willing to put up with some of the, uh, you know, the problems with it and some of the headaches of it? Uh, me personally, I'm not willing to upgrade my internet service to, to support it. I mean, that would be stupid, you know, especially since also too, it's like, there's not really, as of today, there's not that many exclusives, if any. So I've already got a PlayStation 4 and an Xbox One, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm just going to buy a physical version of Cyberpunk 2020 or 2077, you know, uh, and it's going to run and look great and it won't use any bandwidth. So, uh, I don't know, maybe the service is not for me, but I'd love to know what you guys think down in the comments below. As always, I want to thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care.